In this video, I'm going to start what I hope to be a weekly series, and in as much as I am able to, about The Walking Dead, which has finally returned, and I am really excited. Every time it returns, I remember how much I like the show, which is funny because when we first when we first started watching it, my brother and I binged it from the library. We got all the DVDs. I think we started with obviously season one. And we binged our way through like five or six seasons at one time. That's a lot of TV, let me tell you. Um, and I didn't really like it at first. I felt it was too violent, too graphic. And the first season really is. But, my opinion. But I think, especially since the time jump, it's become a lot more character driven. And I like that. I like shows that are a little more character driven other than just the violence. I mean, I understand the type of show it is. There's going to be violence because there just is. But I think sometimes they overplay it. And I don't like that. However, the... Yeah, I know I have a Star Wars notebook for The Walking Dead. But, okay. But yeah, I do think that going forward since the time jump and Rick's disappearance... I think they've become more character driven and I really appreciate that. That it's become more about the story rather than the story and the character rather than just beating up walkers and surviving. I mean, they have some good character moments throughout the series anyway, but I really like how it's become more characters driven than violence driven. And we are entering season 10, part three. <laughs> Instead of starting a season 11, they're going to give us some bonus episodes of season 10, which is pretty cool. And Maggie's back. Maggie and Glenn have always been my favorites. And so I'm really excited that Maggie is back. Obviously, Glenn cannot be. Very sad. I have to admit, I'd always kind of hoped, even knowing the comic book storyline, that they would rewrite Glenn's death or ignore it entirely. Because they have ignored so much of the other comic book storylines, such as, say, Judith, who doesn't even exist in the comics, really. And uh, so I, I was really hoping that was, was one storyline they would choose to ignore, especially seeing how popular Glenn was with the fans. But they did it. It was so sad. But, you know, what are you going to do? And I'm very excited that Maggie is back, though. Even though I did enjoy Lauren Cohen's uh, short-lived Whiskey Cavalier. Uh, you can no longer watch it online. Sorry. But it was really funny. It did not get very good ratings. I think people wanted it to be more of a serious spy show. And I found it to be more like Psych, where it was not really. But it's really funny. I liked it. <laughs> and, but I'm glad that she's back anyway. Even if it means losing a funny show. Okay. So, as you know, or maybe you don't, and full spoilers ahead. Alright, if you haven't seen it. And I spoil it for you, don't come crying to me. Uh, the episode is very Maggie-centric, and I was not unhappy with that. Um, it's to help fill in some of the gaps of where she and baby Herschel have been the past several years since she left the hilltop. Uh, I guess he's not really a baby anymore. He's probably about five, six years old now. Um, I did watch the episode twice now. I've seen it twice, once with my grandmother, because it's her favorite show, and the second time just to write notes with. And it's a very really good episode. I don't know if it's really worthy of watching it twice in a week. <laughs> Most shows are not, but I did enjoy it twice. So. And so my thoughts will probably be somewhat Maggie-centric because the episode is, and I'm a bit biased toward favorite characters, in case you haven't noticed this before. Um, yeah, I've always focused more on anything that I do Walking Dead-wise. I've always focused more on the characters and their stories and their backgrounds rather than the walkers and their violence. Quite frankly, I have no desire whatsoever to focus on walkers or the violence, and that's just me. But I know a lot of people enjoy the walkers. I know they make Walker Pop Funkos. I know they make t-shirts and merchandise with the walkers, and some people enjoy that, but that's just me. I don't. First, that's a really nice little scene, I thought, with Maggie and Judith. You know, Judith is now motherless, which I don't really understand this whole storyline in which Michonne left. It made no sense. But, okay, 
that's not in this episode. I think Judith sees Maggie as kind of like a big sister rather than a mother figure. She has a mother figure in Carol, kind of, more so than Maggie, in my opinion. And then I think that's going to be an interesting relationship because I think Maggie might want to try to mother her a little bit. And Judith is, you know, what is she's like 11 now? And she's kind of like, nah. <laughs> I think that's how it's going to play down. But we'll see. We'll see. Then, of course, you've got that Maggie and Negan showdown. Well, stare down, rather. Uh, in the Now, I watched it through AMC+. Plus, and the afterward, they played a few minutes of a interview with, I think, a director or a writer. Anyway, she said initially they had had lines in that scene with the Maggie and Negan stare down. But then they decided they didn't need the lines. And I really don't think the lines were necessary. You can just, you know, you can... Just see this hatred pouring off of Maggie that she does, she has not forgiven Negan. She has not moved on. And Negan, on the other hand, kind of believes he's paid his debt to Alexandria. He has paid, he has been in jail all these years. He's helped them. I mean, at one point, he's even saved baby Judith. Well, she's not really a baby. And she wasn't then either, but that's kind of a baby thing to do for a snowstorm. But. And I know Daryl tells Maggie that the whole Negan situation isn't settled yet, but honestly, it kind of is. If they wanted him to be put to death, then they should have done it years ago. It has been settled. Whether or not Daryl believes that, it has been. They've kept him alive. With their dwindling supplies, they've kept this guy alive all these years. So, clearly, they're keeping him alive for a reason, and it's not just... Out of kindness. <laughs> and Negan now seems to be out, out on some kind of work release type thing. Um, and he's not in jail. He's not in that basement anymore. And I don't see him being put back in there. Despite Maggie. Alright. But we'll see. I think that's going to be interesting seeing that go forward. Because as I said before, she hasn't forgiven. She hasn't moved on. And every time she sees Negan, she's just going to remember what he did to Glenn, and yeah. <laughs> but I just, I also find it very fascinating, this pure hatred that you can just, you can just see it. And I find it so funny that Lauren Cohen and Jeffrey D. Morgan actually played a married couple in a movie. And so, and I know in reality, they're actually friends. And so it's like, whoa, that's a fine bit of acting there. <laughs> and... I think they're both very wonderful and talented, and it's going to be quite fascinating to see this storyline going forward, because I think given the chance, she might just kill him. I think eventually he's going to end up having some kind of, like, redemption arc, which they kind of have already begun that in some ways, and I think, like, he's going to save Glenn, a baby Herschel or something like that, and she's going to be very conflicted about him after that. Now, that's all just conjuncture. I don't... I used to be really into spoilers and finding them, but it's gotten really hard to do that nowadays. So, I don't know. So it's just my opinion. One thing, though, and this is very kind of irritating to me. I noticed that throughout the episode, Maggie coat, Maggie's coat disappears. One scene she's wearing it, the next scene she's not. I know you could say, oh, well, she got hot. She took it off. Okay. Okay. But where'd it go? Her pack is not big enough for this big leather coat she's wearing. So, where'd it go? But, alright, that's just a minor little thing, I know, but it's just interesting to me. And I also thought, here, after the crew cleans the walkers out of the storage containers, they settle in for the night. Alright. I did really like that scene between Daryl and Maggie. She's kind of treating him as a confidant. And I think she's been a long time that she had, since she's had anybody she could really talk to. You know, she's been away from the family for years. And it's been a long time for her that she's had a friend like Daryl. And I did think the scene, especially for a season premiere, ran a little long. I love scenes like that. I love the moments, character moments like that. But I did think for a season premiere, they probably should have moved it along a little faster. And, you know, I really think, though, Daryl puts off this caring but not caring tough guy who needs no one but take care, takes care of everyone persona. And, yeah, I'm like, he's just this 
awesome guy who probably never really saw himself as a father figure. He never really saw himself as needing anybody. He's a loner, but here he is all these years. He's discovered a family, the family he never knew he needed or wanted, but has. And whether he wants to admit it or not, he's now become this father figure to Judith and probably to RJ as well, because you know full well, anything, he'll step in front of anything for those kids. And I think he'll probably become that for Herschel as well. And that, it is, that's one, always one of my favorite things to see Daryl with the kids because, you know, he's just such an anti-kid guy and yet he's not. I think he puts off that persona, but he's not really that kind of guy. He's really a big soft teddy bear and Judith knows it. <laughs> and then there's poor Kelly. You know, like as viewers, we know her sister is alive, but she doesn't know that. They don't know that. Any of the characters don't know that. And Daryl hasn't quite given up looking for Connie either. But where is she? No one knows yet. I would do wonder, though, if she perhaps been picked up by these new villains that we haven't really known much about yet. Um, don't know yet. Don't know. All we ever saw of her was being, like, pulled up out of the mud. We know she's alive. Beyond that, we know nothing. And they don't even know that much. I do wonder who this new mysterious villain is. I mean, suicide bombers, burning villages to the ground, killing innocent people. I can't help to think that it has something to do with whatever Maggie refused to tell Daryl. I think that it has everything to do with whatever it is Maggie would refuse to tell Daryl. I mean, we know it does, but at the same time, I think... I think that they're going to find Alexandria if they haven't already. And I think that part of Maggie's story is going to come to the forefront sooner rather than later. I really hope the writers have learned their lesson with the whole Negan storyline, how they dragged it out for seasons. And don't do that again, please. Because that's just too, too much. But seriously, Little Herschel, so well cast. He is just so freaking adorable. He is totally Glenn and Maggie's son. I mean, right down to that ball cap, which I read somewhere is actually the same ball cap that Glenn wore, which would make sense. I mean, I know these guys, they don't have a lot of personal belongings, but I can see Maggie holding on to Glenn's cap, especially for their son. That would make a lot of sense to me. I mean, the ball cap's not very hard to carry around, is it? I, I love that little scene of, hey, mom. And even Daryl was smiling at that, and it doesn't take... And Daryl doesn't smile at a whole lot, <laughs> but he does with the kids. He does for the kids. And I think that's very much who he is. Like I said, he's like a teddy bear. He just doesn't want to admit it. Let me see. I know. I got lots of notes here. Now, once again, on the ba way back to Alexandria, and who here thinks and villains know exactly where Alexandria is located? If they don't, they soon will. I do believe we're going to see these villains again. I think they're going to become the new big bad. I don't know who all is going to survive this great encounter. Because every year, someone dies. Uh, I do think, though, when they stopped at the storage containers once again, I found it very strange that just as the previous trip, they all separated for the night. Would it not have been safer to sleep like two or three to a container? Would it not, I mean, aren't there safeties in numbers? But, yay, you know, do what you want to do, I guess. But I do think that would have made a lot more sense to not separate. But, whatever, do what you want to do. <laughs> Let's see. And I also found it a little strange when they were walking into Alexandria. And I'm sure this had more to do with the new COVID regulations for filming than it did for actual, I don't know, filming purposes. They were all so far apart, including little Herschel. He wasn't even near his mom. And I did find that a little strange through, like I said, that probably had more to do with uh, the COVID regulations, like the fight between Maggie and the suicide bomber. They did talk about that later on with the interview with the director, writer, I'm sorry, I did not pay attention to what it was, um, about how they're only allowed to have fights with like two people now and people have, they only let so many people per scene and they have to be so far apart. 
And I think that probably had more to do with it. And, or maybe they just wanted to spread them out to be dramatic or something. I don't know. But it didn't, didn't really make any sense to me had them so far apart, especially little Herschel. But, you know. But I definitely think there will be some kind of showdown between Negan and Maggie this season. I mean, people love Maggie. The people of Alexandria love Maggie. And her family's there. And they will do anything for her and little Herschel. For Negan, on the other hand, not so much. They, they're not loyal to him. They're not his people. And even then, his people were ruled by violence. And they just didn't want to die. So they just did Negan said. So, but that's not how Alexandria is run. But I do think there will be some kind of showdown. Because, yeah, I just don't really believe, I find it very difficult to believe that people of Alexandria have forgiven Negan as much as they seem to have, that they've moved on from what he did, not just to Glenn and Abraham, but to the people as a whole. I mean, Negan's followers were not good people. Glenn and Abraham were not the only ones affected. And so I find that very strange to think that they've just moved on and let this murderer, I don't know, leave him. Because Carol released Negan because she knew that he was the only one who could do what needed to be done. Whether we like Negan or not, and he's not really a very likable character. I know a lot of people love Negan, but I don't really understand that. But Negan knew he had to be the one to kill Alpha and because he was the only one capable of doing so. Not that the others can't kill, but they don't just go out to kill. And quite frankly, I kind of still wish Carol had been the one to kill Alpha. Because Carol should have been. <laughs> but that's just my opinion. Alright, so what do y'all think? Did you watch it? Let me know. Uh, AMC Plus is now available on Amazon Prime. You get the episodes on Thursdays instead of Sundays. Woohoo. That makes me excited. Alright, so let me know. Let me know what your thoughts are. I'd love to know. I'd love to talk. Geek them. Walking Dead, WandaVision, let me know. Alright, have a good night. Be nice. And be kind. Have a good one.